think if you are a young person, a high school student or a medical, middle school student, and you are questioning your sexual orientation or your gender identity, I think the first thing that people should be telling you is congratulations, because that is such a hard question to be asking in this society. Everybody has their own story. I came out when I was 17 in rural North Carolina. My parents were not accepting. I left home, I got a job, I finished high school. Eventually I went to college. You have your own story. Everybody has their own story. And I don't know your story. I don't know your situation. So I'm not gonna tell you that it's gonna get better or that I'm here with you because I'm not there, I'm here. You're there, you're in the situation. And maybe in your situation, everyone's telling you every day that you don't matter. But I wanna say that you do matter. Your story matters and what's happening to you matters. You're alive and you exist and you matter. And I'm sitting hope. in Texas right now, not feeling loved or wanted, that I know that there are no role models there. You don't feel like you don't see any, but I want you to know that we're here. I'm sorry to all of you adolescents out there who look around and you don't have role yes. models and you don't have the people to talk to that you need in the small towns and the slightly larger towns because all of us have left. You. That has to change. We have to come back to the small towns. We have to change the minds of the people who are currently your role models. Those homophobic people who don't understand or help you become the strong adults you need to become. And we need your help. We need your help to become the next generation who can turn back to the next generation and say that you are queer and that's a wonderful and powerful thing. And I've been heartbroken by a lot of the recent news of violence against GLBTQ people. And I would just wanna say that anyone that uses Christianity for, to promote their own homophobia betrays the love ethic of Jesus Christ. I said you have to believe in your own self, your own worth, your own significance. You cannot, you cannot believe the lies that people are telling you that you are, 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 are of an abomination to the supreme being. You cannot believe that your life, your precious, wonderful life is of no value. You have to somehow dig deep in your own self and know that everything that you are, you are connected to everything that's perfect and holy in this universe. And there is nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with you. Your being is perfect, you're wonderful, you're blessed, and because of that, you are a perfect manifestation and true reflection of God. I relate to some of the feelings of being an outsider, although I don't completely understand what it's like to be bullied as an LGBTQA youth. And through my studies and through my work in the Bible, I have come to the realization that the Bible is so much more freeing than we sometimes allow it to be. The Bible doesn't hate women. It doesn't hate LGBTQ individuals. The God that we hear described in these stories is a God of love. And this God, this God of love, this God who created the universe and who loved the people of Israel and who became incarnate in this world, this is the God who loves everyone. So you, youth, LGBTQ, queer, you are created in the image of God. The way that you look, the way that you sound when you speak, the way that your body moves when you walk, you are created in the image of God. Everything about you, your desires and your talents, the people you love, you are created in the image of God. It breaks my heart to see individuals struggling and taking their own lives from the hate that is incited upon them from others who are ignorant and scared. I want you to know that you are loved, that you are beautiful people. Um, and that if no one else in this world loves you, I do, even though I don't even know you. Um, and that is an extension of the love of Christ. The thing is that Jesus never said a word about homosexuality. I mean, if it was such a problem, you would think Jesus would have dealt with it. You know, he dealt with a lot of problems. He, he talked far more about money than he talked about sex. He talked about forgiveness and accepting people. He talked about repentance and forgiveness. He talked about caring for people that nobody else was caring about. He talked about feeding hungry people. He talked about visiting people in prison. 
I'm telling you, you can look through all the Gospels. Jesus never says a thing about homosexuality, not even close. So if anybody ever says anything to you about who you are as a gay or lesbian person and says you're bad, you're wrong, you can be sure they're not speaking in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what people say or who loves you or who doesn't love you. What matters is that you know deep down in your core and never doubt that God loves you. And if you know that, the world is yours. We deserve to be loved exactly as we are. And the word of God should never, ever be used as a reason to hate people. You are beautiful and you are perfect and you are holy and your body is holy and, and however you live that body is sacred. Um, can't let anybody tell you different. And I just want to celebrate you and I want to celebrate the healing that can come from that place so that we're not going to destroy each other. Because at the end of the day, if we destroy each other, then the messages that teach us that we're not worthy, they win. I want to encourage everybody, those who have been hurt and those who have hurt, which is everybody, to make every gesture an offering of peace. Stay steadfast in the face of adversity. Let your inner light shine. What's going on is between you and your God. And don't my hope and my prayer for you is that you can live into yourself, know you're blessed, know your strength, and know you're whole. There are days that are extremely difficult to get through. People say go day to day, but sometimes it's hour by hour. Sometimes it's hour by hour. And what I would say to you is just get through it. Life is bigger than the black screen you see in front of you now. You will one day see a whole nother screen and it will not be that long. Hey, I am 21 years in a relationship with my partner, Bob. And the two of us have um, made a home with a lot of great friends. So I have to say to the young people today that are being bullied, that are feeling hopeless, don't focus only in the, the situation you're in right now. Find help. You have Please remember that people in the future will need you before you think about doing any harm to yourself. We need your voice. You are loved. There is nothing wrong with you. And the love that you have for people of your own sex is a gift from God. Don't let anyone take that away from you. So, I ask you to please wait. Procrastinate a little. Five years from now, if it feels the same, we can talk about your options then. But for now, trust me, you don't have to feel alone anymore. Us who are rooting for you, and uh, you have people who understand sexuality in a, in a way that isn't just check this box or this box, and there's a lot of room. There's a lot of I room. I feel like you're the only person on the planet right now who has these thoughts and feelings and sensations and you might feel like an alien, but you're not. And there are people, there are people who are like you and there are people who love you even if they're not like you. Um, it's okay to be who you are. It's okay to try on many hats, as you might say. It's okay to find yourself in as many different ways as you can. When you are thinking about harming yourself, your soul is in trouble. People think of it as an activity, but really it's as if you're lying still. So if you're thinking and you feel like you're in that hopelessness, start running. Run as fast as you can and find somebody who will listen. Find a place where you will just be heard and know that by taking that risk, you are giving yourself an opportunity, an opportunity for life. Let me just tell you that life is awesome. The leader of a seminary uh, here in Union in New York, uh, our doors are bursting open all the time 
with a wide range of people who come to, hear, come to Union to learn what it means to preach the good news. And you are the next generation. Please don't hurt yourself. We need you all walking in the door of this school and sitting in our classes and learning that good story about Christianity that's out there so that you can in turn be that pastor in that church in Enid, Oklahoma, in Lawrence, Kansas, in Kensington, in Athens, uh, in Tyler, Texas, um, that can be there as those open arms and doors. So we welcome you here. Uh, the world waits to welcome you more, and God bless. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Child, I love you because of who you are. May God bless you and keep you always. May you know that you are meant to be exactly May you see the lights surrounding you. May you be courageous, standing upright and strong. May you feel your truth in the muscles and in the rhythms of your breath, in the warmth of your blood. May you see your perfection, your belief. May you trust your body's language in the beating of your heart as it flows from your chest to your fingertips. In the salt of your tears, with the agelessness of your eyes, may you see and touch and taste your profound goodness. May you live into the claiming of your wholeness, adding your voice to those singing life's enduring song. Amen. Amen.